and welcome to week two. Uh, this lecture is really going to be focused on just uh, exercise one, this assignment using SPSS. Uh, I'm going to walk you through very quickly how to do this. The intent here is not to be an advanced class on SPSS. It's just to give you uh, a glimpse into it, um, a little bit of a, an overview of the types of functionality that SPSS can do. Uh, SPSS is a statistical analysis tool created by IBM and in the world of criminal intelligence or in particular uh, the world of crime analysis statistical analytic techniques are very valuable uh, and there's something that you'll likely use in the course of your uh, your job um, so that's what we're going to do here is we're going to take some basic uniform crime reporting data ucr data and we are going to open it in spss to run some frequency analysis um, against a pretty large set of data so what you'll see here in the exercise instructions is there's a few things. First is the link to the lab where you can open a uh, software as a service copy of SPSS for you to use. And then you are going to want to download these two attachments. The first attachment is exercise one data.sav. That is the data file that has all of the UCR data that you're going to be analyzing. So we'll be opening that uh, inside of SPSS once we have SPS open, and I'm going to walk you through that step. Uh, next is you will see that the data sheet is actually encoded with uh, what are called V codes. Uh, and in UCR uh, world, the V codes correspond to different things like the location where the crime occurred, uh, um, the state, um, the uh, identifiers related to the victim, um, and that's the kind of stuff that we're going to be analyzing. As you'll see here, there's a few different batches of info that we're going to analyze for frequencies. Um, first is victim one, race, ethnicity, um, sex, and age. That's the first kind of batch. Offender one, same information will be the second batch, and that'll make more sense as we go here. The first thing we're going to have to do is go to the lab and open it. So I'm going to click on the lab link. It's going to want you to log in with your my.fsu.edu login credentials. And then of course, everything now you have to do the duo um, login. So I'm going to send myself a push here and approve it. And that should be logging me into the lab. I know for many of you, this is not your first time here, but if it is and you haven't been in the lab yet, this is a way that FSU can provide remote access to a variety of tools for you to access through a software interface. So you don't have to, um, uh, you don't have to actually download any of the software. You can simply use it right here from the website. So up at the top, if you click on apps, you will see you have access to a variety of things. Uh, we are going to be clicking on IBM SPSS Statistics 27. Uh, it looks like this. It has, it has the blue icon. Do not click on IBM SPSS Amos 27 graphics. That is not what we're using. We are using this one, IBM SPSS Statistics 27. So let's click on that. Mine is going to open with some data. I'm going to go ahead and close that out so you can see. I might actually have to log back in. Yes, I will. Okay. So click on SPSS. It's going to bring you to the um, opening window. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, once you're here, uh, once you're in SPSS, this is the screen that's going to initially come up. Uh, I'm going to recommend that you close that screen out. You can either click close at the bottom right or you can click the X at the top right. And you will have uh, a blank sheet that looks basically like an Excel sheet. Now, you should have gone and downloaded exercise1data.sav. I recommend just downloading it to your desktop or somewhere easy to find. And then we go to file. We're going to go to open and we're going to open data. Um, in my case, I already have it 
ingested into the system, but you can navigate to your desktop and find it. But we're going to go with exercise one, data.sav, and click open. It may take just a moment for that data to populate because there are, as you can just look over here and see, there's a ton of rows, hundreds and hundreds, thousands of rows of information on all of these crimes. So um, each row, in this case, represents a different crime. And each column, remember the V codes I mentioned, each column represents a different data point related to that crime. Some of them you can kind of figure out. Like if you look at V11, uh, it appears that this is uh, counties. Uh, the, this is a V11 is the county code. V12 would be the state uh, code. Uh, but some of these, it's not clear what they're talking about. 11, 12, 9, what are those? Uh, well, if you go back to your code book, your code book here, your UCR code book, will actually tell you what those are. Um, and that's good to know. But what I want to show you is um, that there's actually descriptors of these columns when you begin the uh, analysis process. So we're going to analyze some of this uh, data for frequency. So let's go back and look again at the first thing we're going to uh, be analyzing. Uh, victim 1. So the first uh, victim 1 listed in the crime report, we want to analyze their race, ethnicity, sex, and age. Um, so what are the reasons you want to do that? You want to look for big picture patterns to see if there are any patterns related to the type of victim involved in the crime. So let's go back then to our window, and we're going to be analyzing these thousands of data sets to see if we can find any patterns. The way we're going to do that is let's go first to Analyze at the top menu, and you're going to, and you can see there's a ton of different analytic capabilities in SPSS. It's a really advanced tool. It's great, again, for crime analysts. For today, we're going to do some basic descriptive statistics, and you guessed it, we're going to click on frequencies. So once we click frequencies, here's uh, what I want to show you. You can see the window cuts it off a little bit. It's not big enough, but you can see V3, V4, V5, V6, V7, V8. It gives you a descriptor here associated with the V code. So even though up here when you see the V codes, there's no descriptors, once you come to the frequency analysis, there is. So I believe victim one, if you look in your code book, starts, victim one information starts at row uh, 19, column 19. And here we go. Victim one, age, sex, race, ethnicity. These are the things we want to analyze. What you can do is select the first one here, hold down your shift button, and then select the last one. And you'll see it has selected now all four. We are then going to click this little arrow. That's going to move it over into our variable box for analysis. Then it's real easy. Click OK. SPSS will now generate a report based on the information you've put in. So we have age. Um, this is the ages of the victims. So if you look at the left side, you know, uh, age starts with either unknown, either the age was not reported, or they can be one-year-old, two-year-old, three-year-old, and you can see, obviously, there's not a ton of you know infants that are being victimized, but as you scroll up and you get into the 20s and 30s, uh, you start seeing bigger numbers associated with um, those folks that are, have been victimized. Um, and then we can look at, for example, uh, the sex of victims. So um, percent is the row you really want to look at. Uh, so female, uh, Females represent 20.3% of the total victims in this data set, whereas males represent 79.6% um, of the victims in this data set. And then you can look at race and see uh, the corresponding percentages there, as well as ethnic origin. Um, so that is a very quick way, and SPSS does a good job of displaying this data uh, for you to see and, and analyze, and it may be um, relevant to the crime analysis that you're doing. So I've just done the first one for you. And what we want to do now is go and export this data. So you're going to go up to File at the top left-hand side. You're going to click on File. And then let's go to Export. Now, once you're in Export, there's two things I want you to do. The first is go to Type. 
And if PDF, portable document format, is not auto-selected, I want you to select that because that's a universally uh, readable file. And then in file name, uh, over here to the side of file name, I want you to click browse. And you are going to need to um, not be fooled by the fact that it says desktop. I like to save files to my local computer desktop, but if you'll notice here, where this is actually save, saving it is on the Citrix FSU desktop on this network. It's not saving on your local computer. So we're gonna have to change that so that you can have local access to it. And you will see that there is a folder or an icon that says save to my device. Click that. And once that's selected, we're gonna add a name. So let's call this one victim one. And it's gonna save as a PDF as file name victim one. You then simply click save and then click okay. Well, let's double check. PDF, check. We're saving to our uh, local machine, yes. Click okay. I'm on a MacBook Pro, um, so if you just saw that little thing, that little icon that jumped over here, that is uh, the file going into my downloads folder. Um, the system doesn't allow you to select where on your computer to save, so it's going to default likely to your downloads folder, but be ready to run a search uh, on your machine if you can't locate it in your downloads folder to make sure you can find uh, the victim one file. Uh, so that's it. Um, and what I've just showed you uh, will work for the other data sets that you need to deal with uh, in the exercise. You would then simply close out no, we don't need to save the contents. And that takes us back to the master view. And then for your next group of uh, information, you would go to analyze, descriptive statistics, frequencies, the same process once again. I hope that's helpful. Um, once you have your files, you can upload those to the exercise. Uh, and if you have any issues or questions, just let me know. Thanks.